Any uh, any beefs going on right now that we need to jump on? I'm not paying attention to none of them. Oh, no more puppy juice. No more puppy juice. Oh, really? Uh, Um, There's different things that... That that's not really beef though. That's just competitive. Uh, competitiveness. All right. So you and you and yeah. Diddy, you and Puff, cool? No, I don't. I don't really oh, rock okay. Them. Damn. All right. I didn't know what that okay. meant. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. So okay. We we'll come back to it. All right. <laughs> Vodka beef. My bad. <laughs> Sean Diddy Combs has been hit with another lawsuit just as he settles his first. Now this time, Joy Dickerson Neal claims that she was a victim of revenge porn in addition to allegedly being drugged and sexually assaulted by the musician back in 1991. A spokesperson for Combs says the accusations are not credible and quote, purely a money grab. Well, last week, Combs settled a legal battle with former girlfriend, Cassie Venter. I saw a guy on the internet the other day who said he used to be your security guard who said that when you were dating J-Lo, Will Smith and Jada tried to pick her up on a threesome and you were gonna beat up Will Smith. Is that true? 50 Cent had his fun, and boy did it last for a minute. However, it seems like for the very first time, Diddy might be through with playing around. He confronted 50 Cent for leaking all of his dirty secrets to the public eye. So check this out. Music Big Shot P. Diddy got hit with a lawsuit from his ex, Cassie, on November 7th. She accused him of a decade-long mess of physical, mental, and emotional abuse, slavery, and a bunch of other heavy stuff. But get this, the lawsuit magically got sorted out in record time just one day later. It blew up the internet. Now it looks like Diddy's nemesis, 50 Cent, is thinking about dropping a documentary spilling the tea on Diddy's assault charges over the years. 50, who runs G-Unit Films, has been loud about Diddy's wrongdoings. So it wouldn't be weird if he decides to dig deeper and mess up Diddy's already shaky career. The whole surviving Puffy documentary idea started as a joke online, but now it's getting crazy support. 50 uploaded a photo that had Diddy sitting on a couch holding a rose with the title Surviving Puffy and the Netflix logo. People started buzzing, thinking a documentary was in the works. Turns out it's a fake, but guess what? 50 Cent is supposedly turning this into reality. On November 22nd, he hinted at making a movie called Surviving P. Diddy. He dropped the idea after Cassie's lawsuit hit the fan, followed by another lawsuit against Diddy's buddy and ex-bad boy label president, Harve Pierre, for assault. In fact, 50 even threw up a screenshot on his Instagram about Pierre's lawsuit. And the caption wrote, I told you they was coming in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, shaking my head. This is a movie, Surviving P. Diddy or Diddy Do It or Not. Executive produced by Curtis, 50 Cent Jackson. Coming soon. Even though that Netflix poster about Diddy was all fake, probably made by a fan. But 50 Cent isn't kidding around when he talks about making a movie on Diddy. He's serious, and he's saying it's gonna be under the legal microscope, just like that surviving R. Kelly documentary from 2019. You know, the one about R. Kelly, who's now behind bars after getting convicted for abuse, kinda like what Diddy's dealing with. And here's the kicker in 50's post about this supposed Diddy documentary. He threw in two more headlines. One about Diddy's clothing brand, Sean John getting the boot from Macy's after a two-decade partnership, and two about Diddy's legal brawl over a tequila brand called Put On Ice, lasting till 2024, according to Billboard. But wait, there's more. 50 Cent isn't just talking about making a film, he's also having a laugh at Diddy's expense. When Diddy settled that lawsuit with Cassie, 50 joked that Diddy threw that money down real quick. Not quick enough to stop other women, though, who claim he did them wrong over the years. And 50's not slacking on keeping tabs on all things puffy. Har Pierre, the ex-president of Bad Boy Records, is also in hot water. He's facing a lawsuit for allegedly grooming and assaulting his assistant. It's a whole mess. The assistant who's been through it is now going for damages, aiming for a fair deal to make up for the assault. The ones in the hot seat, according to the lawsuit, are Bad Boy Entertainment, Bad Boy Records, and Combs Enterprises. And check this out. This bombshell drops less than a week after Diddy made peace with Cassie in their lawsuit, where she threw out accusations, including domestic violence and whatnot. Word is, the suit got wrapped up just a day later in New York. And get this, for the first time since settling things with his ex, Cassie, Diddy's been spotted. He was chilling outside his Star Island mansion in Miami, looking kinda heavy. His chief of staff was there, and Diddy had his face buried in his hands. Seems like settling with Cassie took a toll. Ben Braffman, Diddy's lawyer, even dropped a statement about it. Just so we're clear, 
A decision to settle a lawsuit, especially in 2023, is in no way an admission of wrongdoing. Mr. Combs' decision to settle the lawsuit does not in any way undermine his flat-out denial of the claims. He is happy they got to a mutual settlement and wishes Ms. Ventura the best. So what exactly happened with the lawsuit? Let's get into the details real quick. Okay, this is a heavy one. Cassie dropped a bomb in federal court on November 16th, hitting Diddy with a lawsuit accusing him of rape and a messed up pattern of abuse that started when she was just 19. She used to be signed to his label, Bad Boy Records, and the lawsuit is throwing around accusations of sex trafficking, human trafficking, sexual battery, sexual assault, and gender-motivated violence, among other things. She claims Diddy's controlling antics kicked off in 2005 when they first met. After she signed with Diddy's record label in 2006, it got worse. The lawsuit says he had his grip on every part of her life, her place, her ride, her clothes, and even her medical records. He allegedly went to extremes, targeting rapper Kid Cootie, who briefly dated Cassie in 2011. And guess what? Just a day after Cassie dropped this legal bomb, they settled out of court. Now let's break down what's happening. The lawsuit is no joke. It's accusing Diddy of serious stuff like rape, battery, and forcing her into sexual acts with male sex workers. Cassie paints him as a classic abuser, luring her in with what seemed like a protective fatherly figure, only to trap her in a messed up, unequal, and violent relationship. Diddy supposedly kept her in check with intimidation tactics, like wrecking a guy's car, threatening to drop a friend off a balcony, and even asking her to carry his gun in her purse. She never went to the police because she feared it would just give Diddy another excuse to hurt her. And Diddy, of course, denies everything. The lawsuit describes over a decade of Cassie enduring Diddy's violent behavior and twisted demands. It's like she was trapped in a cycle of abuse, violence, and sex trafficking. Diddy started showing interest in Cassie in 2006, according to the lawsuit, and things quickly spiraled into a crazy drug-fueled lifestyle. Once they got romantic, Diddy and his crew apparently took over every part of Cassie's life. The lawsuit even claims that people close to Diddy witnessed the beatings but kept quiet because they were scared of their boss. In 2009, there's a grim account of him allegedly kicking her in the face, making her bleed, and then hiding her in a hotel room with his staff. Every time she tried to escape, Diddy's network tracked her down, and his people told her she had to go back to him for success in the entertainment industry. It's a messed up situation. According to the lawsuit, Cassie went through some heavy stuff during her time with Diddy. They're saying she had memory loss from using a ton of substances and even had thoughts about hurting herself. There's this crazy instance where MRI results were going straight to Diddy. Now, in this legal drama, they're calling out Diddy and all his business connections. Cassie's asking for some cash in compensatory damages, but they haven't put a specific number on it. And get this, in the lawsuit, Cassie's dropping bombshells about Diddy making her take part in these freak-offs. Basically, she had no say and had to plan and do things with male sex workers while he did his thing. This went on for years in fancy hotels all over the place, sometimes happening as often as once a week. Diddy was taking pics and recording it all. Cassie tried deleting videos from her phone, but he'd force her to watch them on flights. In 2016, after one of these freak-offs, Diddy apparently dropped 50 grand to wipe out surveillance footage of him going off the rails and throwing stuff at Cassie, giving her a black eye. She'd take a bunch of drugs during these messed up encounters, like ecstasy, cocaine, GHB, ketamine, weed, and loads of booze. It got so bad that she got hooked. Here's a crazy twist. The lawsuit suggests that in 2012, Diddy blew up Kid Cootie's car because he was ticked off about Cootie dating Cassie. And you won't believe it, Kid Cootie confirmed it's true. The worst part, the filing claims Diddy forced his way into Cassie's home and assaulted her in 2018, even though she kept saying no and tried pushing him away. After that, Cassie was done with him for good, cutting ties with Bad Boy in 2019. It's a total mess. But even so, Cassie and Diddy settled things just a day after she dropped the lawsuit. Diddy put out a statement on November 18th saying they decided to sort it out amicably and he wishes Cassie and her family the best. By settling outside of court, Diddy dodged dealing with any new evidence that could have come up during the legal process. Now, Cassie's lawsuit used the Adult Survivors Act in New York, giving victims of sexual abuse who were 18 or older at the time a year to bring cases even after statutes of limitations expire. 
Cassie mentioned that this law gave her the chance to speak up about the trauma she's dealing with. As for the music industry, Kesha switched up the lyrics to her song TikTok in response to the allegations. She used to sing, wake up in the morning feeling like P. Diddy, but in a performance on November 19th, she changed it to feeling like me. 50 Cent also had something to say in a now deleted Instagram post, hinting that Diddy isn't out of the woods yet. He mentioned Diddy paying up quick and predicted more trouble coming Diddy's way. Members from Danity Kane, the group Diddy formed on MTV's Making the Band, showed support for Cassie. Aubrey O'Day tweeted about trying to tell people, attaching news headlines about the lawsuit. Dawn Richard also sent a message of support, praying for Cassie and her family. Some past allegations against Diddy also resurfaced, like an interview with Virginia Five from 2019, where she detailed physical abuse. Diddy's former chef, Cindy Ruella, filed a lawsuit in 2017, claiming sexual harassment. She said Diddy would ask her to serve food after sexual activity, and they'd be naked during these meals. Diddy settled that lawsuit in 2019. Now, fast forward to Thanksgiving weekend in 2023, and Diddy's hit with two separate lawsuits accusing him of sexual assault. One comes from a former college student, and the other involves Diddy and singer-songwriter Aaron Hall, allegedly assaulting the plaintiff and her friend in 1990 or 1991. Things got pretty intense after that. Diddy also faced accusations of assaulting his son's football coach in 2015, rumors of a club fight with Cootie in 2012, and a lawsuit for ordering a promoter's assault in 2007. Back in the 90s, he even pleaded guilty to a reduced assault charge for attacking the president of Interscope Records. Crazy history, right? Since settling with Cassie, Diddy's been keeping a low profile, but the paparazzi still managed to catch him looking all serious in his backyard. Back in 1991, when Diddy was just a 22-year-old up-and-coming producer in New York's music scene, he played a role in promoting a charity basketball event at City College. This event, featuring rapper Heavy D, turned tragic when an oversold game led to a stampede, resulting in the deaths of nine people and injuries to over two dozen others. While no criminal charges were filed, a state judge held the college, Diddy, and Heavy D equally responsible for the tragedy. This paved the way for almost a dozen wrongful death and personal injury lawsuits. In 2000, the final lawsuit involving Diddy was settled for an undisclosed amount. Moving to 1995, a limousine driver named Cedric Bobby Lemon claimed he was assaulted by bodyguards hired by Diddy to protect singer Mary J. Blige. Lemon filed a lawsuit stating that the guards attacked him backstage at a concert as they tried to clear the area, alleging that Diddy failed to properly train his security. Lemon won the lawsuit by default when Diddy did not appear in court, claiming unawareness. However, in 2004, an appeals court overturned the order requiring Diddy to pay Lemon $450,000. In 1999, Diddy faced felony charges in New York for allegedly assaulting rival record executive Steve Stout during a reported dispute over a music video scene where Stout was depicted nailed to a cross. Diddy later apologized and Stout requested the Manhattan District Attorney to drop the charges. Instead of going to court, it was reported that Diddy agreed to pay Stout half a million dollars to settle the matter. But this wild ride of Diddy's past antics doesn't stop there. So, there's this cable TV host, Roger Mills from Detroit, who claimed that Diddy and his crew attacked him. Why? Because Mills wouldn't sell Diddy a video interview where he was grilled about the 1997 unsolved killing of Christopher Wallace, aka Biggie Smalls, or the notorious Big. So in 2001, Mills threw a lawsuit at Puffy, claiming assault, false imprisonment, and property destruction. Diddy's spokeswoman straight up denied everything, calling Mills out for trying to cash in on Diddy's fame. The case went to trial, and in 2004, the jury sided with Diddy on all counts. Score one for Puffy. Now rewind to the end of 1999. Diddy's caught up in a mess. He gets arrested, accused of having a weapon after a shooting at a NYC nightclub. He was there with Jennifer Lopez and rapper Shine, real name Moses Barrow, who witnesses said fired a gun into the crowd. They claimed Shine and Diddy had weapons. The cops pulled them over, found a gun in the car, and Shine ended up getting arrested, convicted in 2001, and kicked out to Belize. Diddy, on the other hand, got off on weapons and bribery charges. But wait, there's more. A lawsuit from three folks injured in the shooting got settled in 2011 for who knows how much. Jump to 2011, 
and Diddy's dealing with a child support suit from his on-again, off-again girlfriend, Kim Porter, for their three-year-old son. They worked out a deal in Manhattan Family Court. Unfortunately, Kim passed away in 2019. Now let's talk about James Sabatino, a consultant who in 2007 sued Diddy for a whopping $19 million, saying he didn't get paid in full for a recording he made of Biggie back in 1994. The suit got tossed in 2009. But hold up, Sabatino was also part of a messy article involving Diddy and Tupac Shakur that made the Los Angeles Times do a retraction in 2008. In 2007, there's another one. Gerard Recknitzer claimed Diddy punched him in the face as he left a post-Oscars event, making him fly backward. He said Puffy even shoved his girlfriend. Diddy's lawyer called it another bogus lawsuit and they settled in 2008. Terms, still a mystery. It's like drama just follows this guy around. Fast forward three years to 2010, and here comes another legal saga for Diddy. Francesca Sparrow, a music executive in her 50s, dropped a bomb by suing him for age discrimination. She claimed she got the boot after working for him since 1998. The company, of course, denied the age factor. But guess what? Diddy settled the hefty multi-million dollar suit in 2011. Then, in the same year, paparazzo Gustavo Garces jumped into the ring. He filed a lawsuit claiming Puffy's bodyguards roughed him up on New Year's Eve while he was snapping pics outside the Dream Hotel in Miami. The drama finally wrapped up in 2017 with a settlement. Garros agreed to pocket $35,000 in exchange for letting the business mogul, his bodyguards, and their insurance off the hook. After that, Diddy took a five-year breather from the legal limelight before making a comeback in 2017. The legal roller coaster never seems to end for this troubled artist, so buckle up for another round of Diddy's legal tales. This time, it's Cindy Rueda, Diddy's personal chef, stepping into the ring. In 2015, she threw down a lawsuit, claiming she went through harassment and had to put in crazy hours without fair pay. Rueda spilled the beans in her complaint, saying her boss asked her to whip up a meal after, you know, intimate times and even wanted to know if she found his birthday suit appealing. Talk about awkward, right? Anyway, she got the boot in 2016, and Diddy's spokeswoman brushed her off as a disgruntled ex-employee. Fast forward to 2019, and they hammered out a settlement. The juicy details? Well, those are staying behind closed doors. Jumping into more recent drama, let's talk 2022. Raven Wales Walden, a former nanny on Diddy's payroll, decided to stir the pot. She filed a lawsuit, claiming she got the boot for all the wrong reasons after spilling the beans about her pregnancy back in 2020. In response, filed this year in the Los Angeles County Superior Court, Diddy threw some shade, he denied the whole niece thing and said there was no discrimination going on. Looks like the legal roller coaster keeps on rolling for Diddy. And you already know about his latest lawsuit with Cassie. We've covered that one extensively in this video. With that being said, we think it is safe to assume that you understand now why 50 Cent is posting about Diddy all over social media, basically on a daily basis at this point. For the longest time, 50 Cent has been spilling tea on Diddy's nasty behavior but only now do we listen to him closely. 50 Cent is still messing with Diddy amid all the sexual assault drama. He went on social media on Sunday to clown Diddy, who's been hit with sexual assault lawsuits three times in the last month. The G-Unit boss pulled off a weird move, blending Diddy and R. Kelly's faces in a pic on Twitter. And get this, he used R. Kelly's song from 98, Did You Ever Think, as the background jam. Did he do it? 50 wrote in the caption, but that's not all. He hit up Instagram to spill more tea on Diddy's legal mess. Nah, he'll be good, 50 wrote under a pic of Diddy. He's got so much dough that when his business buddies bail, he'll just dip into his own pockets and sort it out. Remember how quick he paid up for Cassie? Dude's a legit billionaire with FU money, folks. So FU. So that's the wild ride through Diddy's legal escapades, from lawsuits with ex-employees to crazy allegations. And guess who's right in the mix, stirring the pot? None other than 50 Cent the ultimate troll, throwing shade at Diddy left and right. It's like they're in a never-ending rap beef, but this time, it's playing out in court. Now, with Diddy caught up in all these legal storms, who knows how it's gonna unfold? There's the recent nanny drama, the history of crazy lawsuits, and 50 Cent hinting at a documentary. Will Diddy weather the storm like a true mogul, or will this be the plot twist in his empire story? Buckle up, folks. 
the legal drama train with Diddy at the helm isn't slowing down anytime soon. And before you go, just don't forget to keep it, Rizzle. Yeah, um, as far as the situations go, that was a lot of lawsuits, man. That was a lot of lawsuits and a lot of settlements. You know, I feel like he settled out of the ones that would have looked the worst if he had got found guilty of them. You know what I mean? Like, he settled out of the one with the, the personal chef. He settled out of the one with Cassie. And those were, like, the, the worst ones that were going to make him look like, okay, bruh, what are you doing? You know what I mean? So he had to settle a lot of those ones. And it's like, to be in that many lawsuits, bro, that's just crazy, like. He's got a long, extensive history in these. And, um, yeah, in my opinion, I don't agree with the guy. I don't agree with, um, I, I don't know if that was his attorney or, like, you know what I mean or whatever, but I don't agree with the guy who said that settling doesn't prove, like, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're not guilty. Like, no, I feel like if you settle out of something and you're paying $30 million, no, you're guilty, in my opinion. In my opinion, because there's no way I would settle you're not going to pay 30 million in legal fees. So if you're settling for 30 million, you'll never pay 30 million in legal fees. Like even if you had a Johnny Cochran, even if you had OJ's lawyer, literally his team, and you hired them for a year, you still wouldn't pay 30 million or for 3 years, you still wouldn't pay them 30 million. Like what the hell? Like no, nah, bro. So if you're settling out for 30 million, that lets you know like nah, he he knows what's good, you know what I mean? He knows that he's going to be done if he goes through with this. So that's how I feel about it, you know? Um, and we've been hearing about Diddy. We've always heard stories with Diddy. You know, we heard about the situation with Ja Rule and him in the hotel. Gene Deal walking in on that. Gene Deal told that story. 50 Cent told about Diddy t trying to take him shopping. 50 Cent's about to come out with a documentary on Diddy, bro. Like, um, YK Osiris, he's, he, like, he had a whole situation with Diddy in Jamaica. Usher had a situation with Diddy. Justin Bieber had a situation with Diddy where they were both children in the flavor camp. And Usher said that he would never send his son to the flavor camp. He said, hell nah, he wouldn't send his son to the flavor camp. So we know there's some despicable things going on there, right? And the list just goes on. We know Cassie, you know what I mean? Kim Porter. I mean, the list just goes on. You understand what I'm saying? And yeah, I mean, Diddy's been in a lot of scandalous stuff, bro. Like... <laughs> scandalous dude you know what i mean i i don't know what to tell y'all i mean it's it's really scandalous when you have your own personal bodyguards coming out and exposing you that says a lot about you bro that says a lot about you because you don't see none of these other famous people besides beyonce and jay-z who are also up to scandalous stuff and are also really cool with diddy and they're really close they're the only other people who have bodyguards coming out and saying stuff how come um Try to think of an example. How come Lil Wayne's bodyguard isn't saying he's doing anything weird? Or how come, you know what I mean? How come other people's bodyguards aren't coming out and saying they're doing a bunch of weird stuff? Like, and it's not like these other people's bodyguards, Diddy's a billionaire, so he could pay a bodyguard any amount of money to hush. But no, they're like, no, we need to expose this. This is the real truth, you know? So if you're, if you're a billionaire and you have billions of hush money dollars, you have billions in hush money dollars, then bro, <laughs> You should be able to make anyone silent. You know what I mean? No one should be exposing you. So the fact that people are still exposing him tells us everything we need to know. You know what I mean? Um. Yeah, I mean, we've seen these situations with Diddy, you know? We know what it is with Diddy, you know? So what, do you guys think, how do you guys feel about the whole Surviving P. Diddy documentary coming out? I think that could be pretty crazy. I think that could... um figuratively put a nail in the coffin, you know, as far as the whole situations go. Because that's what's going to reach the most amount of people. If 50 does something like that, it's going to actually break the internet. Because people are already saying it. Videos like that were already going pretty viral. Like, they were getting good views just saying Surviving P. Diddy, and it wasn't even, like, an actual... It wasn't, like, an actual Netflix documentary level type thing. Um, But one thing that he could have to worry about... Is that um you can sue someone for making a story about your life without permission, that is a thing you know and um I don't know if Diddy would do it though because Diddy usually lets people say whatever they want about him as long as they don't sue him, 
You know, he usually lets them say whatever or whatever. And even if they sue him, he'll just settle or take it to trial, usually. So that's all he can do. You know what I mean? Um, Yeah. What do you guys think? How do you guys think a Surviving P. Diddy documentary will go? And do you think he would try to sue 50 Cent um, for making a, a story about his life without permission? Which is a real thing. You can actually sue someone for that. You can. So what do you guys think? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Do you agree with the points that are brought up in this video um, with Diddy and all the other lawsuits? And do you think he is guilty in them or do you think he's innocent? How do you guys feel about the whole situation? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And let me know what y'all think about the points that I brought up in this video. Do you disagree or do you agree with the points that I brought up in this video? So it's like 50 to 70% of y'all are, are not subscribed, which is obviously an, a major issue. This is the most important message that any of you are ever going to hear in your entire life because this is the message that's going to affect the youth. This is the message that's going to affect your children if you have any, affect your siblings, your younger siblings, your cousins, everyone. Everyone will be affected by this because this is what's going to change the decisions that are made in the future. And this will change the amount of strength that the elites have over people because if people wake up and people decide not to sell their soul then the elites don't have any more puppets to push agendas on us. You see the effect? Do you see how massive of an effect that is? If if we enlighten the youth and the youth decides they're not going to sell their soul, they don't want to do this, or they decide that that's not the, the right decision for them, well, then what happens? Well, now the elites don't have people. They don't have any puppets. They don't have any um, figureheads to have deceive millions of people. You see, the elites have a very smart war strategy of... Um, it essentially goes something like this. They'll grab, they'll get one person and they'll put everything into that one person. They'll make that person as influential as they possibly can. They'll probably, they'll try to put as much money into that person. They'll put a biggest budget into that person and um, they'll promote that person, everything, right? And the whole strategy is that you get one person and you bolster them so much that they can deceive millions. So... I hope you heard that. You get one person to deceive millions. One to deceive millions. So, um, for example, like Jay Z and Beyonce. Let's see that. Let's say that they have. Let's say they have thirty million people who will follow anything they say. Well, now you have two people who can control thirty million people and actually get them to to make an actual difference, which is major. So, if you have a thousand people like that, you if you have. Let's say you had 10,000 people like that. You could control the whole planet. There's only bill there's only like 7 billion people. You know what I mean? There's only like 7 billion people. So if you have uh if let's say you had a couple thousand people that can control 30 million each. Do you get what I'm saying? Like you could control the whole world and disin and put disinformation out everywhere just through that type of strategy. So that's the strategy that the elites use to maintain a stronghold on everyone and to deceive everyone and keep everyone distracted. And to push these agendas on people, you know what I mean? This is the exact strategy. This is why we have Ice Spices, Sexy Reds. This is why we have Glorillas, you know what I mean? This is why we have all these new artists that are pushing the new agendas because it, that's the whole method. You know what I mean? That's the whole strategy. Think about it, actually. Just think about it. Think about how effective a strategy like that actually is. So, yeah, y'all. That's really what it all comes down to, right? I mean... That's what it all comes down to. So it's all about waking y'all up, informing y'all, and equipping y'all with the information to make an informed decision so y'all don't have to end up in that compromised position that we talk about on this channel. Okay? So yeah, if you enjoyed this video, like the video. If you have a cousin, a brother, a sister, anyone, share the video. You know what I mean? Share the video. Share the love. Share the knowledge. Share the peace. Share the light. We need to inform everyone about this truth. It would be greedy to keep this to yourself. This is not a message you can keep to yourself. This is not one of those dopamine TikTok videos that you're watching on YouTube right now, okay? This is not one of those TikTok dopamine videos. No, you actually need to share this because this is actually going to change future generations. This message actually matters. This is not nonsense. This is not This is not derper content. This is not a dopamine video, okay? To intense your dopamine. No, 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 no. This is none of that. This is real knowledge and enlightenment and prosperity and actually going to change future things. <laughs> and this is actually going to help us prosper, okay? So, yeah, y'all. 
If you enjoyed the video, like the video. As I said, the snow is right here. Be easy, y'all.